This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. The U.S. Supreme Court looks poised to uphold President Trump's travel ban, which blocks most people from seven countries, including Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria and Yemen, from entering the United States. During oral arguments on Wednesday, Justice Anthony Kennedy appeared to side with the conservative side of the court. Lower courts have repeatedly ruled against versions of Trump's travel ban, saying they were unconstitutional and in violation of federal immigration law. Among those who have asked the Supreme Court to rule the travel ban unconstitutional are the children of Japanese Americans who are interned during World War II. Joining us now is one of those children, Karen Korematsu, daughter of civil rights icon Fred Korematsu, who was detained for refusing orders to be sent to an internment camp set up for U.S. residents of Japanese ancestry. His case went all the way to the Supreme Court. Last year, Karen Karamatsu wrote an op-ed for The Washington Post, headlined, My Father Resisted Japanese Internment, Trump's Travel Ban is Just as Unfair. In the op-ed, she wrote, Trump's travel ban echoes the World War II incarceration camps, separating those of a different ethnicity under the guise of national security. Both executive orders under Trump and Roosevelt target and discriminate against minorities, tear families apart, and preach intolerance. And I believe we'll soon see they are found to be unconstitutional." Unquote. For more, we go to Austin, Texas, where Karen Korematsu joins us, founder and executive director of the Fred T. Korematsu Institute. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Karen. Explain what happened to your father and why you see this so closely correlated with what's happened in the Supreme Court this week. Good morning, Amy. Um, it's good to be with you. Uh, thank you for bringing focus uh, to this issue. And uh, to my father, uh, you know, he thought in 1942 that the executive order 9066 that was hastily issued, I might add, for, uh, by President Roosevelt, uh, violated um, uh, our civil rights as Americans. All due process of law was denied. And he thought it was wrong, as an American citizen, to be incarcerated uh, when, uh, when he had done nothing wrong. And so he, that's why he fought his case all the way to the Supreme Court. And talk about what happened to you. Well, I, I learned about my father's uh, Supreme Court case, actually, in high school, when my friend uh, was giving a book report uh, about the uh, Japanese-American incarceration camps. And then she said, but there was this one man uh, that resisted the military orders, and it ended up to be a landmark Supreme Court case called Korematsu versus the United States. And, uh, and she didn't say Fred at the time, and it wasn't until after class that she said that that was about my father. Talk about your internment, Karen. Well, um, I wasn't actually born in one of the, the camps at the time. Uh, I, uh, you know, became uh, aware, of, of course, you know, with my father uh, telling me uh, after I learned about this in school. but. Uh, and and it, I, when the evidence was found in 1983 that proved that there was no military necessity for the Japanese Americans to be incarcerate, incarcerated, um, his his case was reopened under, under a kind of little, little known legal term called nor, quorum nobis, which means um, an error has been made before the court. And a legal team uh, uh, took on uh, the case as pro bono work. Uh, and his com my father's federal conviction was overturned or vacated in 1983. But it still stands on the Supreme Court record. Uh, and that's the warning, uh, that after all this time, next year, will, uh, it will be the 75th anniversary of my father's Supreme Court case. And this is the caution that we wanted the courts uh, to, be, uh, to be reminded of. I want to turn to a clip from the documentary produced by Eric Paul Fournier. It's called Of Civil Rights and Wrongs, The Fred Korematsu Story. You know, one day my girlfriend wanted to meet me. I was waiting for her at the corner, and she didn't show up. I ran out of cigarettes. So, like a darn fool, I went across the street to the drugstore, and someone recognized me, I assume, because when I came back and I was standing there for another five minutes, then the police came. 
And they looked around and looked at me and said, do you see any short uh, Japanese person around here, Asian? I said, no. He looked at me and says, well, let me see your identification. By that time, the two MPs came in the military. And he says, we have to take you to the city hall. After I was arrested, I, I, I never did see my girlfriend again. So there must have been something going on in there, but I didn't know. Karen Karamatsu, talk more about what Fred Karamatsu is saying, your father. Uh, well, actually, I'd like to correct the title is uh, of civil wrongs and, and rights. Uh, and then my, my brother, uh, Ken Korematsu, was also co-producer co of the two-time Emmy Award documentary. And, uh, and so, my, my, like my, I said, my father thought it was wrong to be, uh, you know, to be put in prison when, uh, uh, when he had not violated any, any laws. And so, he never gave up hope that someday he would be able to reopen his case. And the result of the 1983 decision was governmental misconduct. And that's what relates to the, uh, the executive order and what's happening with the, uh, the Muslim travel ban now. Uh, and that's what we're, we're uh, wanting the, the court uh, to be aware of uh, and to stop repeating history. Uh, it's, it's important that we remind the courts that uh, there needs to be a separation between uh, judicial and executive. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's, it's far, it, it's an overreach, we feel, on, on the president's um, part. And being in the Supreme Court uh, on, on Wednesday and to hear the justices and the argument uh, was, uh, was really al alarming in some ways, because uh, they could have addressed a lot more of, of uh, the situations that are, are immigration violations and uh, people's um, civil rights uh, and civil liberties that we want to uphold. Um, Neil Katyal, um, who is the attorney representing the state of Hawaii in the Supreme Court uh, this week, tweeted, um, quoting your amicus brief, the government's arguments in this case bear a disturbing similarity to the arguments this court accepted in Korematsu, uh, Hirabayashi, and Yasui. Explain ultimately what happened to the case from federal court to the Supreme Court, and also um, the compensation after decades that Japanese Americans got. Were you one of those as a child of someone who ultimately was jailed for resisting the internment camps, who got that kind of compensation? Well, uh, the, uh, the case, as I said, was my father's Supreme Court case. And here, Bayashi and Yasui were also reopened under the Coram Nobis uh, procedure. So, the, uh, you know, the, the convictions, the, the personal convictions were uh, and federal convictions were vacated, but the, but the Supreme Court, you know, case still stands. Uh, and, uh, I, as I said, I wasn't born in uh, one of the incarceration camps, only people that were. Uh, however, by the time that the—actually, um, to bring uh, uh, recognition that this year is the 30th anniversary of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, that was the official apology. Uh, to everyone of Japanese ancestry that was incarcerated, and there was reparations, but it was really the apology that everyone wanted. But you had to be living, uh, and so people like my grandparents who had passed away, uh, you know, there was nothing, you know, that they would have received, and it didn't go to the family, uh, you know, per se. Only those two that were living. But the important. Uh, reason that the, the reparations what was was uh, was needed was for education. So that's when the Civil Liberties Public Education Fund, uh, originally sanctioned by Congress, was uh, st was started so that we could educate uh, you know future generations uh, about um, you know really the inhumanity of the incarceration 
uh, and, uh, and, Karen, and what's happening today. Karen Korematsu, I want to thank you for being with us, daughter of Fred Korematsu, head of the Fred T. Korematsu Institute. That does it for our show. A correction, it was Yip Harburg and Harold Arlen who wrote the song Paper Moon. I'm Amy Goodman. This is Democracy Now! Thanks for joining us. Thank you.